Hi, everybody. Welcome to a, another card flip through. This time it's for the Psychic Development Oracle deck. Um, so give me just a minute here, and I'm going to switch out cameras, and um, we will get this show on the road. off all right so let me see how are we looking there all right very good here we go okay so this is called the psychic development oracle deck it's by tana newberry um comes with this uh with this guidebook this is a really cool deck. It um, it kind of helps when somebody has a question of, do you know what my psychic gifts are? Or do you know what I should focus on to improve my gifts? Um, this deck will certainly um, help point somebody to the right direction. Um, I've had the deck for a little over a year now. And as you can kind of see by the by the frayed look of the cards, I used the heck out of it. Um, it's it's basically intended to be used um, to help enlighten your understanding and efficiency on using your own psychic abilities. Uh, it can also be used to help you with your personal psychic practice. Um, they're also really good when you're, like I said, when you're doing a reading and someone is asking you, um, do you know what gifts I have or what should I focus on, that kind of thing. Um, I mean, sometimes spirit with some of us will speak directly to us and say, tell them X, Y, Z. Um, and sometimes they don't. So, <laughs> or at least with me, that's how it works. Um so uh, this will help. I've used it in the beginning. I used it as a means of how to how to improve my own gifts. What should I focus on? Um, everything was so very new to me in all of this that I really didn't know how to approach things. Um, I had far more questions than I had answers. And so I got this deck, um, and I'll be perfectly honest, I don't remember buying it. I don't remember who I bought it from. It literally showed up in the mail one day, and it said it was by me, that I was the one that purchased it. I have no memory of purchasing this deck. But I love it. So let's get going so the first one up says ask a pendulum that's pretty self-explanatory next one is ask and receive ask for a sign automatic writing i don't know if anyone's ever tried this um, i know some people do it and do it very efficiently and effectively um, it hasn't really worked with me, so either it's just not a gift for me or it's not a gift for me yet. We'll see what happens as we go down the road. Um, card reading. Clairaudient ability. Claircognizant ability. Clairsentient ability. Clairvoyant ability. Clear your energy. This is very helpful if someone's asking which they focus on, that they're not sure where to go with something, um, especially if you pull this card for them, because then you're letting them know you need to clear your energy. You need to ground yourself so that you can move forward. Cleanse your space. That's very important. Um, if you can, 
make yourself a small altar or area where that's where you do your cards. That's where you do your recordings. Uh, that's where you do your readings, that kind of thing. That can make a big difference because not only is it a cleansed space for energy and spirit to work through, but it also will psychologically put your mind in the right mindset. If you go into that space, uh, it's like getting dressed for work and going into your office at work. Um, you know, you get dressed in the morning, you put on your work clothes, um, and that kind of sets your mind up, okay, I'm going to work today. So um, that's very important. This is correction or connection. I'm sorry, excuse me. Sometimes it's hard to read these. Um, and this is just a reminder that you may need to work on your connection, your connection to spirit, your connection to one another, your connection to your clients, um, just to work on that. Um, crystals. Um, now, I love crystals. I love rocks. I don't know a thing about them. I'm the first one to admit it. Um, I actually just recently bought myself another little pack of some crystals. These are all shaped like hearts. I don't know anything about them. I haven't even opened it yet. Um, but there are those in the community who are very tuned in to crystals and rocks and get messages from them and they know what they mean and they know what their properties are and they know how they can help you with enhancing your abilities, with healing, um, all kinds of stuff. I mean, if you go to a nail salon and get a pedicure, a lot of places will offer um, hot stone massage with your pedicure, pedicure. And that's where they take hot stones and they will rub them up and down on your legs. Feels wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. If you ever get the option to do that, take advantage. Do your research. This is also very important. Um, especially if you know you're going to be reading about a particular subject. Um, it helps to do your research so that you have a better understanding of what it is you're reading on. Now, there are some things you want to go into a cold. You don't want to know what you're reading about or who you're reading about because it's important to get to get a clear answer um, without any preconceived notions or ideas. Um, I recently did a, uh, a reading video with, um, with Amy, Princess Warrior, and uh, Heather, Indigo Jaguar, Intuitive Arts. And we did a reading on the TWA Flight, uh, Flight 800, I think it was. It had crashed, or it kind of like blew up, I guess, right after takeoff. And so it kind of helped to read up on what the deal was, what had been done, who had done investigations, why there were still questions about the investigations. Um, and that helped when we started reading on it because then we had a better grasp of what it was we were, re we were receiving. We understood what was coming in better, I guess is a good way to put it. Okay. Does it feel good? That's also very important. If something doesn't feel right, if you're reading for someone or if you're getting a reading and something just doesn't feel right, you'll know it. And, you know, either you need to stop and back away and maybe re-cleanse the space and start again with your reading. Or if you're a client, it may be best to just back up and say, you know what? I'm not getting a good feeling on this. We're not connecting. Um, maybe we should try this another day and go from there. Or you may have to find a different reader. Not everybody connects with everybody. So we have to keep that in mind. Okay. Don't forget to protect. That's very important. 
I know before I do private readings, um, before I do uh, online mini reads or group readings, I try to do a little protection um, spell. I guess you could call I'm technically not really a witch, but I do like a little protection spell around myself, around my cards, uh, my pendulums, my crystals, my uh, whatever else I may use in the reading. Um, you know, I ask spirit to come in and protect us um, from anything negative uh, or evil or um, to only allow information to come through that's for the most benevolent good. And, um, and that's very important because you don't want to let negative influences into your space. You want to make sure that you put protection up around yourself. Okay. Double validation. This is also smart. Um, if someone tells you, spirit says you should do, you know, mow your grass. Well, double validation would be watching the weather. Is it going to rain today? You don't want to get out there and try to mow the grass if it's in the middle of a rainstorm. I mean, and I'm being kind of really lighthearted with this. This is much more um, deeper on a deeper level. But um, sometimes you can do a reading or you can get a reading. And like I said, something doesn't feel right. Or you feel like something is, is not, something is left unsaid. Or maybe what came through was not what you were expecting. And it's not unheard of to ask another reader to do a reading on the same topic or question that you asked reader A. Well, then you ask reader B. Um, I don't consider that as just trying to get multiple readings. I, I know the few times I've done it, it's because I've wanted to validate what one person said because it wasn't exactly what I expected to hear. And if another reader comes up and they have the same results, if they're getting the same message, then I know, okay, this is what spirit wants me to know. So, you know, it's like a second doctor's opinion. If somebody tells you you've got a cancerous tumor, well, you're going to go see another doctor and get more tests run. Okay, empath. I think a lot of us within our community we are empaths. Um, we hear and we feel and we sense what others are going through. And hello, little girl. Yes, I love you, but you need to get down. Energy exchange. This kind of hits me close to home because originally I started out and I didn't charge for my personal readings. I just told people, you know, whatever you feel led to give. And then I had it pointed out to me from someone who is much wiser and, and uh, a lot more plugged into things than, than me, someone that I look up to. And she said to me, but you're exchanging energy for energy. So you charge a price because you're using your energy, your time your space, your um, your cards to pull in spirit and get a reading for someone. And they, the person who's getting the reading, then feel like they're getting their, they're getting what's what it's worth if they're paying for. It's exchanging your energies and being asked to be paid for basically doing a job we do that all day long at our at our regular jobs or if we do things for other people you know and we ask for a small fee so in each reader we all have our own way of how we charge or how much we charge or what we're comfortable with and i think that just comes with as you 
grow and become better at what you do. Um, you feel more comfortable asking a more established price range um, as opposed to um, just doing it for free. I mean, that's what the little mini readings are for that we do online is you're getting little free mini readings, um, which is why they tend to be very short to the point, you know, because if you want a full out reading, then you need to make an appointment with a reader, any reader, pick whoever you feel like you would connect with. And then you're going to exchange your energy. You're going to, you're going to set an appointment. You're going to pay them for their time and they're going to give you their complete and total focus and energy to give you that reading. And that's very important. Expand your circle. That's also important. You know, um, we have a wonderful community and I'm always excited when I come across somebody new and I can invite them on my channel and, and, and you know, kind of introduce them to, to everybody else. Say, hey, look who I found. Um, you know, I don't expect anything in return for that other than the thank you. <laughs> and that's about it because I feel like part of my calling is to help introduce more readers to the community because our community is growing so fast that there's not enough hours in the day to to be able to read for and, and do for those requesting help. So we need more readers, you know, we need more people who are plugged in to, um, to be sure that they know there's a community here that's gonna love you and support you and guide you. And um, it's important to you as a client to know that there is a, variety of readers you can go to, um, a variety of psychics that you can go to, depending on what it is that, what kind of questions you're asking, what kind of readings do you want. Um, and we all have different abilities, different gifts. Some are very plugged into mediumship. Some aren't. Some of us are learning. Um, some are really, really good at reading tarot cards. Some are really, really good at reading oracle cards. Some are, you know, they can do, um, uh, what do they call it? Um, uh, remote viewing. That blows my mind when people can remote view. I'm not able to do that yet, but I would love to be able to. Um, so who knows? It, it may show up one day. And I'll be able to do it, too. Okay. Have confidence. That's very important. We all need to have confidence. Confidence in ourselves, confidence in our ability. Um, confidence in our ability to reach out and help other people. It's very important. Influencer. In a lot of ways, that's what we're doing. We're, we're helping to influence people to listen to spirit, to listen to their heart, to open their mind, to accept what may have been unacceptable before. And the more you open your mind and open your heart, the stronger you become as an individual. It was a sign. Yeah. We've all had those uh, serendipitous moments of synchronicity when we either ask for a sign or we're talking to somebody about something and whammo, something happens and you literally kind of take a step back and go, oh, okay, that was definitely a sign. Spirit was trying to tell me about that. So be sure you keep your eyes open, your heart open, your mind open for that. Well, let me get a sip. Okay. Keep good company. That's important in any walk of life. You know, if you hang out with thieves and liars and 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 whatnot, 
then what does that say about your character? That doesn't mean you can't get kind of sucked into being around somebody like that. But when then when you realize that that they're that that is their real personality, get away from them. You know, make new friends. Meditation practice. This is something that's important for all of us. Is learning to get quiet, to still your mind, to just open yourself to receive messages. For some people, it's a lot easier than for other people. This is something I struggle with. Just trying to get my brain to shut up for five minutes is, is very difficult. But I'm getting better at it. But I practice every day. I do a little bit every day. So it's important. It's something to work on. Mediumship. I just mentioned that. Again, this is something that it can be a little unsettling. If somebody that you know is dead show up and start talking to you tell them i said so such and such and so and so and that and that and that and it's not so much the message that you're giving because i know with myself and i've heard other mediums say this they have no recollection of what they've said after they've done a reading they they would have to sit down and watch the video to see what their response to the questions were um but again, it's don't be afraid of, of those on the other side reaching out because that's how they're able to connect with their loved ones, to give messages, to give help, to give warnings. Minimize distraction. Again, very important. It's hard to give a reading to someone if you got the radio going, the TV blaring, the kids running around, the the dogs and the cats barking and meowing at you. Um, it's very important that when you set aside that time to do your readings, to do your meditations, uh, to do your own studies on abilities that you want to learn to be better at, it's very important to minimize all the outside distractions so that you can focus and give your concentration to what it is that you're working on. Natural abilities. You see, this blows me away because there are some people, it seems like they just whammo, it just comes to them naturally. They are immediately able to plug in and start answering questions or plug in and hear from Uncle Johnny or from Mama or from, you know, whatever. Um, it's, it can be disconcerting when you meet someone who has natural abilities. It just, it just seems so effortless that they do it. What we don't understand is they have to work at it too. Um, it just takes, it just takes practice. That's the whole point, is to practice. Natural advisor. That's also important. Again, it's important to find somebody that you connect with. Someone that you just feel that connection with when you're working together or reading together or reading for someone or getting a reading from someone. It's very, um, it's, it's, it's necessary in order to get a clear message. Um, some people are just natural advisors. They're, they're good at giving people advice. They're good at listening to someone's issues and then kind of helping them work out. Well, take step A and then go to step B and then go to step C. And it may be in an order that you didn't really think about before. So that's one of the things that can 
really be nice when you find the right person to work with. Okay. Natural healer. Yes. Now, I've had personal experience with this of uh, what we call in the Cajun culture a tree terror, sort of like a medicine man from a Native American um, context. Uh, a tree terror is someone who has natural healing abilities. Um, I watched my son get healed in a matter of about a 10 minute time frame from being very sick with a high fever to being nothing wrong with him whatsoever. Good as normal. Good as new. Blew my mind. Um, and it was because the lady that came over, and I didn't even know that she was a treater, came over and saw that he was sick and offered to, to treat him and asked our permission. And we said, yeah, sure, go ahead. What can I hurt? And wow, did it work. Um, nature boost. Now this, I, I, this I really get because when I need to plug in, when I need to really get grounded, really hear what spirit's trying to say to me, I have to go outside. I have to go be in nature. Um, I used to go for walks. It's Because of my disability, it's very difficult for me to walk now. But just to go sit outside on the patio. Um, at work, I go sit outside under the oak trees. Um, just something about being outdoors with nature around me really boosts my energy. It gives me a really big boost. Part of your purpose. This is also important to... Once you realize what your part is of how you can create and develop and grow within your purpose, then it's yours. Um, psychics can help you figure out what your purpose is, but ultimately it comes down to you and what you feel like spirit is telling you to do. Professional practice. Again, that's another thing. I mean, if you're if you're going to do something like this, then you need to make it a professional practice. You know, um, set aside the time for it. Uh, have that proper space where you do your readings, so that when you meet with the client, everything is right there at your fingertips. I mean. You wouldn't go to work and leave half of your tools in another building, right? Um, so this is this is very important. Psychic mastery. This is something we all work towards. Even those people who come across as being super duper psychic, they still work at it. They still put in the time. They still meditate. They still pray. They still... You know, they still work at their craft, just like somebody that bakes cakes or builds buildings. You know, it's, it's all part of learning the craft and mastering the craft. And we never, we never get 100%. It's, it's a constant growing learning session that we do it's constantly making yourself better making yourself stronger opening yourself up to a more deeper level so that you can help others psychometry this is that ability to be able to pick something up and you get a reading off of it um that has not happened for me yet. Uh, hopefully it will one day, but there are some people that they can touch an object and shoosh, man, they, they are like instantly plugged in. Recognition. 
I think that's something that a lot of us tend to take advantage of and not realize that we're doing it. But when you start opening yourself up to spirit, when you start working on your craft or just working on developing yourself to be a better person, you recognize others that are like you. It's part of that recognition. Ritual. Now, this is important for anyone, no matter what you practice, what your belief system is, um, how you go about doing things. We all have little rituals that we do to get us in the right headspace, to prepare our space, to, um, to call in spirit to come and work with us. We all have our little rituals. And it's important to find a ritual that works for you and then stick to it. Scrying. Now, this is really cool. In fact, I just ordered myself a crystal ball. I've always wanted to try to do this. Um, Nostradamus um, used to scry. Um, uh, they say that um, uh, Newton, who the physicist, um, he he did scrying. Uh, most of your really strong psychics, uh, whether today or from the past, um, all did some form of scrying, and that's where you're just you're looking into a bowl of water, or a crystal ball, or a mirror or, you know, a multitude of items that either provide a reflection or provide a void space, a voided space that you're looking at so that you can see either visions or you can just see um, what it is spirit wants you to know. Uh, different people see different things. Um, I guess I'll find out fairly soon if I'm able to do this and what I'm going to see when I do it. So I'm looking forward to that. Spirit is helping you. Yes. Every day. Spirit helps every day. In little ways, in big ways. Sometimes in very dramatic ways and sometimes in ways that if you blink, you miss it. But they're still there helping. Spread the word. That's also important. If you go to a reader and they were, they gave you a good reading, they were professional, they were polite, they were kind, they were friendly, um, you felt like they really listened to you, tell your friends, tell your family, spread the word. Let that person build a business, especially if they're going into it as a business. Um, a lot of us get into this thinking, I just want to help people, you know, or this is fun. I just want to, in the beginning, that was me. It was just like, this is fun. I'm having fun with this. But after a while, it became evident to me that this was more than just fun. This is what I'm supposed to do. And so it's important for us that when we, when we meet or, or know someone who is an ethical person who tries their best to do what's right when they're doing their readings for you. Um, it's important you spread the word and you let others know. Um, it's important to you. It's important to them. It's important to the person that you're spreading the word about. It helps them as well. Step up your practice. This is another thing. This is something I've been slowly doing. As I've learned more, and as I've gotten more conf confident and more comfortable with, with doing this, I've slowly been trying to step up my practice um, to make it to make it more efficient and to make it a little more official and to enable myself to give a better result 
to provide a better product, I guess is a way to put it. Um, just like a doctor, you know, has to have the proper tools and the proper training in order to do a surgery on you. Um, we do the same thing. We practice. And sometimes spirit is the one that reaches out and tells us, hey, it's time to take that next step. It's time to go to the next step, move up. Suspend disbelief. For a lot of people, this is probably the hardest thing to do is to suspend that disbelief and come to the realization that, yeah, this is real and this is happening. And there is spirit. There are ghosts. There are uh, ETs. There are fill in the blank, whatever it is. Suspend that disbelief and open your mind up to accept what could be, what most likely is, and what can be even better. Teach others. This is also important. This is where mentoring comes in. Um, I mean, when I first got started doing this, I would watch videos of readers that had been doing this for a while and were really good so that I could learn what they what they did. And when I was able to talk to them and pick their brains about well, how did you do this? Well, how do you know that? It was very important. It was very helpful to me that they were willing to share what they knew and what they had learned in order to help me grow. And as I grow and learn more, I am more than happy to reach out and teach what I've learned to someone that comes along and starts asking me questions. How do you do that? Well, what, what kind of cards do you use? Well, why do you do it this way? And then, you know, that helps us determine what works best for us. There's more information. There's always more information. Always. Never close yourself off to information. This is your practice. Again, you know, you're doing this. Most of us are doing this because we truly care. Because we want to help others. Because spirit comes and talks to us because they can't reach the person that they want to talk to. So it's important that you keep that in mind when you're building your strengths. Time to learn. There's always a good time to learn. It's important to set aside time you know, maybe an hour a week to listen to a new teacher or to practice a new uh, a new ability or to figure out how to use that pendulum or how to read a different type of cards. Um, just bought a kipper deck myself. And so now I'm trying to learn how to read the kippers. Um, it's really interesting so far. So, um, Time to share. Again, this is spirit telling you, share what you know. Share what you have. Help others along the way. Timeline prediction. Some people are good at this. They can, they can give you predictions. They can look into the void and they can, oh, this is going to happen in two months, six months. Um, two days, whatever. Um, some of us don't have that ability, or we don't have it yet, um, but some people are really good at it. But it's all a matter of, of being open to what's coming. Trust versus validation. It's one thing to trust what someone tells you. 
It's another thing to be able to validate it so that there is no doubt in your mind. Use a new tool. Like I said, I got a crystal ball coming my way. That's going to be a new tool. And I'm looking forward to playing with it, seeing if I can, if I can make it work. Use your imagination. This is important in whatever you do in this life, no matter what it is, what it's for. We've been giving this extraordinary ability, this, this unbelievable, extraordinary ability being able to imagine things. Imagine what it was like 200 years ago. Imagine what it will be like 200 years from now. You know, I mean, it just the sky's the limit when you allow your imagination to take flight and just and just take off. Use your own abilities. Again, very important. Practice what you know. Practice in the area you feel you're being led. And use the abilities that you have. Don't try to mimic what someone else does. Because their ability may not be your ability and vice versa. So worry and work on what you have. You are not alone. This is very true. You have your ancestors. You have your guides. You have angels, you have spirit, you have friends, you have family, you have people within the community here. That there's always someone right there that you can reach out to and that you're not alone in this. You're getting stronger. Now see, this is, this is what we all want to hear. Positive confirmation that, yeah, <laughs> We're getting better at this. Your intuitions are real. Yes, I can't tell you, and I know I've heard other readers say the same. How many times you get a message, and you're like, that doesn't make any sense. Why would I say that ridiculous thing? And then you go ahead and you say it, and you have the person you're reading for going, oh, my God, how did you know that? That, that's exactly what they would say, or that's exactly what happened, or, you know, whatever. Um, trust your intuitions. Know that they're real, and be willing to follow them. Well, thank you for going through this. I did this card flip a little different than normal. Um, usually, I just, I just read the card, and... You know, and I let y'all know, um, I just read the card. You know, the, the whatever the card is, whatever the title of the card is. And I don't really go into it. And for some reason tonight, with this deck, it just led me to expand. To expand on this deck. So, um. Hopefully, I didn't bore anybody too much, and um, I hope y'all enjoy it. This is, this is the back of the cards. Isn't that cool? Um, so, um, thank you for listening, and thank you for watching. I hope you, uh, I hope you enjoy this card flip through, and um, I believe you can get this deck on Amazon. And Etsy. I'll have to double check. I'll put it in the. Um, I'll see if I can find the links for it again, and I'll put it in the description box. So y'all have a great evening, and um, I'll see everybody soon. Bye for now. <laughs>